Before I show you how to create a personal website on Notion to go from this to this. Let's answer the two questions I know you're thinking. Why create a personal website and why use Notion? We'll cover all of this and more. And if you stay till the end, I have some pretty cool Easter eggs for you. When I look up Naman Kapoor on Google, I better see yours truly. And I'm lucky. As far as I know, I'm the only Naman Kapoor in the world. There are a couple Ummans out there and Namans, but only one me. And when I look you up, even if you have a common name, I better see you on the first page. And that's why a personal website is so important. It's that one place anyone can go to learn everything about you. And a personal website is optimized for SEO by definition. It has your name all over the place. And if you backlink it on your resume, your email signature, or whatever else, then search engines will give your website priority. And that means you get priority, that coveted spot on the first page. All right, so we're on the same page. Haha, <laughs> you need a website ASAP. When you think about creating a personal website, you should care about three things. Aesthetics, cost, and editability. Looking good is relatively easy these days. There are so many free templates and static site builders like Gatsby or Hugo, and even some really good paid no code options like Webflow, WordPress, Bubble, Squarespace, and so many others. And for what it's worth, some of the most impressive people have the simplest looking websites. Take Patrick Collison or some of your professors from back in school. Minimal is the new cool. And Notion is the epitome of minimal. Super simple, super clean, super modern. Cost is where things can get a little pricey. You'll have to host your website somewhere, and if you want a customizable domain name, then that's more money. And if the design requires minimal effort or technical knowledge, then there'll be some other price tag for that. Don't get me wrong, the free tiers of these platforms are usually pretty good, but if you want to customize anything, that's where the paywall comes in. And finally, easy to edit is where the greats get separated from the mediocres. You want to be able to easily edit content, font, styling, and whatever else, and you also want your changes to be propagated almost instantly. And if you're on a budget and don't want to write bare bones, HTML, CSS, JavaScript by yourself, then editability can get tough. Now that you know what to care about for your personal website, I'm going to walk you through everything I've learned over the years. The one thing that's not going to change throughout all these websites I'm going to show you is my personal domain. The domain I bought through a promo code back in freshman year of college and the one I still have today. And so I urge you to buy a domain. It's pretty cheap and a really good investment. Mine cost me about $16 a year. You can get a domain through GoDaddy, Namecheap, or even Google Domains. I use domain.com, but I honestly wouldn't recommend it. I'm just too lazy to transfer it over to another site. All right, you have your domain. How do you create a website? V0. Here's my website back in 2016, my first website ever. It's basically a copy of a free HTML5 template with some very minor tweaks. And I hosted it on GitHub for free, which is awesome. It's actually really easy to set up. You just name your repository username.github.io. You put all your website code in there and then magically you have a website at username.github.io. And they also allow you to specify a custom domain pretty easily. You just have to change some A name and C name records either by yourself or you can just hit up your domain tech support and they'll do it for you. But wait, there's more. GitHub also allows you to SSL encrypt your website contents over HTTPS for free. So next time someone visits your website, they won't think you're a hacker. GitHub, I love you. And for editability, it's actually pretty simple. If you have some technical background and know how to use Git, you literally just Git add your changes, Git commit, and then Git push, and the changes are live within seconds. Now that's fire. But you still have to understand Git and manage your code. So I give this website a two out of five. Bare bones, but not bad for a first website. Very simple, very cost efficient, but does require some technical knowledge. V1. I made some changes to the website over time. I added a projects page. I changed up the styling, but the workflow is the same. V2. Then during the summer of 2018, when I was interning at Microsoft in Seattle, I decided to start blogging. I used Medium, but I also wanted a copy of my blogs on my personal website. So I literally wrote a script to scrape the Medium contents and render it in HTML and CSS on my personal website. In hindsight, this was a lot of work for no reason, but I was young and naive. This website gets a three out of five. Some extra work required, but I had a blog now, which is awesome. These V1 and V2 websites are actually out there. You can search for them on the internet, but they're really hard to find. So I'll leave them as an Easter egg. If you find them, comment below. I'll be really impressed. V3. Then during the summer of 2019, when I was interning at Gusto in San Francisco, I decided to change things up again. The web scraping was too much work, so I decided to use Ghost, which Gusto actually uses for their blog. That was nice because there was kind of a local front end for blogging, so I could just copy text from Medium and publish. That website looked like this and actually still exists. Link in the description. This website gets a 3.5 out of 5. Ghost is open source and free, and I could host everything on GitHub again. Though Ghost did require some getting used to, and it was a new platform I had to learn. Quick hint for the Easter eggs, you can find my old websites through this one, but it'll require some digging. V4. After college, I decided I wanted to change things up again. I wanted something simple, and Notion was getting really popular. It was just so easy to manage my content. I could edit and publish in seconds, and everything was self-hosted and free. They even give you a pretty cool customizable domain now. I found a template I liked and went to work. Since this isn't my current website, I won't go into too many details, but some things I thought were important. A nice profile pic and cover pic, 
a quick bio, some things that I was focused on right now, and where to find me on the rest of the internet. I also shared some blog posts I'd written, and at some point I should port over my posts from Medium so I have all my writing in one place. I also love looking up what people are reading as inspiration, so I also put my reading lists. This website gets a four out of five. Notion is really easy to use and free. They host the page for you, and it's really easy to make changes and publish. I'll put links to some good Notion website templates, and you're more than welcome to duplicate mine. V5. And now we get to present day. I actually made this website just a week ago, and it more closely reflects my current vibe. And this is the type of website I'm gonna help you create. We're gonna be using super.so, which is a wrapper built around Notion. And like many other no-code builders, it has a free tier and a paid version. I went to super.so and duplicated the website builder to my Notion workspace. I then checked out some themes for inspiration to get an idea of what I could build. I really liked Minima, so I decided to recreate it. As I'm creating this tutorial, I'm now realizing I could have just duplicated the page and that would have saved me a lot of time, but creating it from scratch forced me to truly understand Super, which I guess was good. Then I opened up the builder. I browsed through the different components to see what I'd need. I liked the minimal two column, the blog post list view, and the simple footer. Couple things to note here, and the instructions are actually at the top of the builder. If you're using a Mac, make sure to hold Option, and for Windows, Control, when you're dragging and dropping any component into your new page. And after dragging, convert the new block into text, and then delete the title text and then the wrapper. I'm assuming this is all so Super can nicely interact with Notion, because as you'll soon see, Super allows you to do some things that would be natively impossible on Notion. Once I had everything, I went through and changed all the dummy text and images to what I wanted. I actually like the Minima illustration, so I'm using that for now. Once I was happy with everything, I converted the block into a page since it was all text. Then I dragged it into the sidebar of my workspace as a standalone page. You can create a quick logo in Canva. The most important thing is you want it to be a square. So I found a black rounded box, put the first initial of my name, and that was it. Pretty basic, but good for now. Then I downloaded it with a transparent background and uploaded it onto my website. There are also some really nice icons at super.so slash icons. So I found one for YouTube and changed it on my button. Once I was happy with everything, I was about done and I could share it with the rest of the world. So I just go up here and then share. But for a little extra customization and that nice site, you just create a super account and link up your website, which is really easy to do. In your super account, you can then customize things like the nav bar, the theme, and some other quick little knickknacks. You can also set a customizable domain and you can also use custom style sheets for all these different themes, but those are only if you have the paid tier. I was fine with domain redirection from numandkapoor.com to numandkapoor.super.site, and so I decided not to pay the $12 a month and get the premium tier. But if you want some of the other features like login pages and passwords, then it might be worth it. For a personal website though, I think that might be overkill. Awesome, the website is live and making edits is really simple. For example, let's say I go change the nav bar or I change the theme, I should see the edits in seconds. And the last thing we'll talk about is domain redirection. This is pretty easy to do. You just have to change some A name and C name records. But once again, I am too lazy. So I usually just hit up tech support at my domain and they do it for me. I give this website 4.9 out of five because it's weird to give something full points, especially if it's my own website, but it's really easy to set up, looks super clean, really easy to edit. And best of all, it's free. This video is not sponsored, but everyone at Super hit me up. I love your builder. That's all for today. Once again, everything I talked about, all those links are in the description. And if you find those old websites, please comment. I'll be really impressed. Till next time, cheers.